फ्रेंड्स लेट मी टेक यू थ्रू द की फायनान्शियल नंबर्स टोटल इन्कम फॉर द क्वार्टर इज अप बाय थर्टी एट पर्सेंट इयर ऑन इयर बेसिस एंड ट्वेल्व पर्सेंट अप ऑन क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर बेसिस टोटल इन्कम फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर इज एट एट सिक्सटी वन करोड अप बाय फोर्टी टू पर्सेंट इयर ऑन इयर बेसिस पोर्टफोलियो यूल्ड इज एट फोर्टीन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट इयर ऑन इयर इट इज अप बाय ट्वेंटी बेसिस पॉइंट क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर इट इज अप बाय टेन बेसिस पॉइंट दिस इज प्राइमरली ड्रिवन बाय इंप्रूवमेंट इन आर इंप्रूवमेंट इन आर डिस्बर्समेंट यूल्ड फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर विच इज एट अराउंड फोर्टीन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट वी हैव डाइवर्सिफाइड सोर्स ऑफ बोरिंग विद मोर देन थर्टी काउंटर पार्टीज आर आर कॉस्ट ऑफ एंड क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर इज स्टेबल एट एट पॉइंट एट परसेंट इयर ऑन इयर इट इज अप बाय टेन बेसिस पॉइंट ड्यू टू इंक्रीज इन मार्केट इंटरेस्ट रेट्स आर मार्जिनल कॉस्ट फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर इज एट एट पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट शेयर ऑफ एन एच बी फंडिंग इज एट फिफ्टीन परसेंट वी हैव अंड्रॉन सेंशन ऑफ टू हंड्रेड टेन करोड फ्रॉम नेशनल हाउसिंग बैंक टू बी यूटिलाइज इन क्यू वन ऑफ करंट फाइनेंशियल ईयर आर मार्जिन फॉर द क्वार्टर इज एट सिक्स पॉइंट वन परसेंट विच इज इन लाइन विद आर गाइडेंस ऑफ सिक्स परसेंट फॉर द मीडियम टर्म नेट इनकम फॉर द क्वार्टर इज अप एट इज अप बाय फोर्टी परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर बेसिस एंड एटीन परसेंट अप॑न क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर बेसिस ऑपेक्स फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर इज ग्रोन बाय थर्टी परसेंट अगेंस्ट फोर्टी परसेंट ग्रोथ इन आर ईयू एम एंड फोर्टी टू परसेंट ग्रोथ इन आर इनकम रिजल्टिंग इन ऑपरेटिंग लेवरेज ऑपेक्स टू ईयू एम इन क्यू फोर इज एट फोर पॉइंट फोर परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर डाउन बाय थर्टी बेसिस पॉइंट कॉस्ट टू इनकम फॉर द क्वार्टर इज एट थर्टी एट परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर डाउन बाय टू हंड्रेड बेसिस पॉइंट क्रेडिट कॉस्ट फॉर द क्वार्टर इज फोर्टी फिफ्थ इन लाइन विद आर गाइडेंस सिक्वेंशियल अपटेक इन द क्रेडिट कॉस्ट इज ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ आर पॉलिसी टू राइट ऑफ ओल्ड एज एनके अकाउंट्स एनुअली इन द इन द मार्च मंथ डीपीटी थर्टी इज एट टू पॉइंट फोर परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर इट इज टेबल आज स्टेज थ्री असेट्स आर एट वन आर एट वन परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर डाउन बाय सिक्सटीन बेसिस पॉइंट आर प्रोविजन कवरेज रेशो फॉर फॉर स्टेज थ्री असेट इज टेबल एट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट पैच फॉर द क्वार्टर इज एट सेवेंटी एट करोड ईयर ऑन ईयर अप बाय फोर्टी सेवन परसेंट क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर अप बाय ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट पैच फॉर द एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर इज एट टू फोर्टी एट करोड ईयर ऑन ईयर ईयर ऑन ईयर इट इज अप बाय फिफ्टी नाइन परसेंट आर ओ ए फॉर द क्वार्टर इज फाइव पॉइंट फोर परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर इट इज अप बाय थर्टी बेसिस पॉइंट क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर इट इज अप बाय सेवेंटी बेसिस पॉइंट आर आर ओ ई फॉर द क्वार्टर इज थर्टीन पॉइंट एट परसेंट एट अ लेवरेज ऑफ टू पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स आर ओ ई फॉर द ईयर इज फोर्टीन परसेंट अप बाय सिक्सटी अप बाय सिक्सटी बेसिस पॉइंट ईयर ऑन ईयर बेसिस विद दिस आई कंक्लूड एंड नाउ वी कैन ओपन द फ्लोर फॉर क्यू एन एन थैंक यू वेरी मच वी विल नाउ पी कैन द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सेशन एनी वन हु विशेज टू आग क्वेश्चन मै प्रेस चार एन वन ऑन द टैच टू एन टेलीफोन इफ यू विश टू रिमूव योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन क्यू यू मे प्रेस चार एन टू पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू यूज हेन्सेस वाइल एक्सिंग अ क्वेश्चन Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Kunal Shah from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi sir. Uh, congratulations for good set of numbers. Uh, so, firstly, if we have to look at it overall in terms of the uh, name trajectory. uh so given that larger part of the growth has come uh, with respect to interest on uh, uh, interest on loans so just uh, broadly want to gauge in terms of uh, uh, what has uh, led to i i would say on a calculated basis it comes to like more than uh, 40 bps kind of uh, increase out there uh so uh, what would have ideally led to this kind of uh, uh, rise and uh, how much of this is sustainable uh maybe in the other line items obviously there would be an element of uh, uh, ipo funds but uh, interest on loans just broadly want to get the delta on a quarter on quarter basis uh thank you kunal ji uh if you see yes there is an impact of ipo uh, you know equity and you know again along with that if you see that our uh, spread what we are maintaining in the tune of the guidance has given earlier Of around six percent. This time it was six point one percent. Yes, focus was there on the ground, and we sustain ourselves. If you see going forward, what is the trend? Uh, what we are, we we feel that we are in position uh, to maintain it to the level of six percent. That is a perseverance which we we'll want to continue uh, in coming time also. Yeah, but in terms of any rate action, anything was there which would uh, maybe which would have led to this? 
So, uh, Kunaldi, our most of the book is on fixed rate of interest. Yeah. So, for the new customer, uh, which we require, yes, we have ensured that we have this uptick uh, for giving the rate as per the spread of 6%. Uh, but for the rest of the customer, we are not changed in this quarter anything. Okay, nothing is changed, yeah. Okay. And uh, secondly, overall, with respect to the ECL provisions on EUM, uh, that's uh, maybe marginally down. No doubt there is an improvement on uh, uh, 30 plus as well to 2.4. But uh, uh, how would we, uh, what would be uh, the levels wherein we would be comfortable? Would we want to make some uh, provisioning on this stage one and take that or keep it at somewhere around 1 odd percent? Or would that be the indication or uh, we would be comfortable at this level looking at the uh, collection efficiency and the trends in uh, GS3 and GS2. So given the you know, uh, you know uh, strong recovery trend in this affordable housing finance space, uh, we believe that you know uh, stage one asset provision will remain around you know 40 to 50 basis point uh, as a percentage of stage one, and stage three assets uh, provisioning will remain around you know 24 uh, percent to around 26, 27 percent. Uh, you will see, you know, uh, marginal uh, marginal improvement in our LGD. Uh, last year it was around 26 percent. This year it is around 25 percent. This is primarily on on account of improvement in the recovery trend that we have seen in this particular year. That's why it has improved. Our PCR has come down from 26 percent to 25 percent this year. No. It will remain broadly in the similar range. Okay, so we will keep it around 24 to 25. No plans to take it to 26, 27, and overall ECL to somewhere around one odd percent. Yeah, it will remain in the you know range of 24 to uh, 24 to 27 percent. And uh, if you look at ECL as a percentage of EUM, it is also a function of your stage three asset proportion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Stage three proportion has come down. Uh, that's why you are seeing you know marginal dip in uh, ECL as, as a percentage of EUM. Sure, sure. And write off would be hardly five odd crores, no? During the quarter, point five odd, uh, point one odd percent. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks and all the best, yeah. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Amang Shah from Kotek Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, hi, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for taking my question and uh, congratulations on a, on a great quarter. Um, just a couple of things. One is um, um, uh, one is on the yield front, just uh, continuing from the previous question. Now um, um, now I do understand that uh, at, at this point of time, I mean, you have been able to hold your, um, um, uh, hold your spreads and, and uh, uh, yields per se, but let's say if we were to look at some of your competitors who have reported numbers, um, um, uh, obviously uh, slightly larger in terms of size uh, ha are are somehow witnessing some bit of pressure on on yield so so maybe more from a medium term perspective how should we look at this whole dynamics between your AUM mix your yield um, uh, and also if you could just give some perspective from a competitive competitive intensity perspective that would be really helpful thanks yeah thank you Mangi. Um frankly we are able to hold this yield what we what we are uh, you know looking uh, is majorly on the focus on direct sourcing, which is 98% in, uh, you know, for us, which is in-house sourcing. So this gives an impact that instead of depending upon third party, you give a better service, turn around time to customer, and then automatically this can be maintained in that sense. Uh, till now, if you see our fixed rate book is uh, around 83-84%. Uh, there for the new customer, we always maintain that spread has to be uh, six percent that we keep maintaining even during the last last call and even now what we explained around that side. Uh, in future also we want to maintain uh, from short to medium range. This is the point which we always keep in mind. So first always being a uh, you know self sourcing which is in house that we continue to work around that side and keep improving on the optics on that side and secondly uh, maintaining the six percent of yield. In case if there is a you know. Uh, 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 trends coming down in terms of cost of fund in coming days, uh, we would still like to pass on to customers uh, and maintain the same level of 6%. So our objective is to remain to stick to the optics that we are revealing out basically. Okay. And um, um, 
Okay, uh, uh, understood. Um, so the second question was uh, more from um, um, from your uh, overall profitability perspective. Now, clearly, at this point of time, there are some tailwinds. Um, uh, given that the leverage on the balance sheet is lower, uh, we we just recently concluded an equity raise, so our uh, reported ROAs are looking uh, say surely healthy. Now, as we scale the balance sheet over next two to three years, where should be the the more steady state sort of ROAs, uh, and also. From from an OPEX line perspective, I mean, um, clearly, I mean, our exit quarter OPEX ratios have been lower compared to our full year averages. So how should we look at, uh, um, uh, again, the whole mix between margin OPEX and, and eventual ROAs? Yeah. Uh, uh, Omanji, you understand this business is a long term and business of longevity. And what is important in this business is a largely persistency. Uh, if we see on the OPEX side, uh, this is uh, something which has to uh, keep coming down as the uh, time progress because of the most of the cost, when the tech cost, other things have been already absorbed. We are already available in 15 states and what we need to do is a penetration in these all states instead of spending somewhere else. So this is uh, one of six that we have a focus on. Uh, mentioned during the last call also, uh, we would like to reduce this uh, OPEX to AUM by another 15, 20 bits as the year gets progress by end of the year. So that is a one thought around that piece. Um, if, if you talk about ROI per se, uh, this is an advantage as of now. Uh, but on a uh, you know uh, focus and sustainable pace, pace we always uh, projected and pitched ourselves. This is going to be something of four percent. So four percent of ROI uh, from uh, you know current level to say mid level whenever you know say the coming times. So this is which we are going to maintain. It. So OPEX side, yes, there will be a uh, decremental as a time progress, and on sustainable basis, 4% you can assume around. Understood, sure. And just last question is on um, um, on our um, um, uh, cost of funds. Um, um, uh, um, uh, I believe last quarter is when we when we got our rating upgrade. Um, um, uh, has there been any uh, meaningful benefit which has started coming through on a, on a marginal cost of fund basis, or or broadly that is um, um, kind of already built in, and we should not expect a material uh, improvement in our cost of funds going forward. Uh, we have, you know, just got our rating upgrade uh, in the last week of March uh, 2024. Uh, so we are, you know, uh, we are in discussion with our lenders for, you know, for our fresh funding as well as, you know, reduction in spreads for our existing borrowings. But discussions are, you know, since uh, it's just a month since we have got this thing, so discussion will materialize over the period of time. And we expect that, you know, uh, 15, 20 basis point improvement in our cost of fund uh, by end of this financial year. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Those were my questions and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Nishin Chavate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, without any assumption in interest rate changes or are you assuming that interest rates come down towards the second half of the year? Nishin, can I just repeat your question? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, Ashish just mentioned that uh, we are looking at a 15 to 20 basis point improvement in cost of funds. Now, is this driven by rating upgrades or is it, or are you also assuming that interest rates come down in the economy towards the second half of the year? Uh, so this is, you know, assuming the stable state of, you know, uh, like uh, interest rate environment. Uh, so in case, you know, interest rate, repo rate come down, then obviously the benefit will be larger. Got it. Uh, just a little bit on growth. Uh, you know, if you, you guided for around 30, 35% growth. So if you could spell out a little bit uh, more descriptively in terms of, you know, how much growth we are looking at from existing branches, you know, like uh, SSG types growth and how much is because of new branch addition. And uh, maybe a little bit of an annual plan for uh, you know branch uh, uh, you know branch spread out that you would do in this year. So sort of a little more qualitative uh, color to under, for us to understand. Uh, you know, yes. How so, mm -hmm. uh, we are present in 15 states, and we were planned to open around 40, 42 branches in this financial year. And these branches will be staggered across the quarters. It is not at a one point particular point or something. Every quarter there will be 
additions of uh, eight nine branches. That way, we want to certainly go up. Um, so uh, uh, the new branches definitely, when we open them, they take they have a certain gestation time uh, to reach a certain number. Uh, vis a vis for the existing branch, there is always a productivity drive. So this productivity drive is on basis of uh, the current set of people, what the numbers they have to produce. Uh, if the branch is working, performing well, then maybe we have to add a couple of more relationship officers in that way, right? So it's not a 30-35 percent is not because of one single agenda. It has to be uh, multi-faceted. Uh, I think one is branch opening, which I mentioned 42, 40, 42 branches in a year. Uh, secondly, is the productivity drive, which we keep harping on. And in case wherever we find the market is quite bullish, we can add resource in those particular branches also. So this way we want to build that. Uh, so uh, on these three parameters, which which we constantly are able to produce the numbers in last, you know, uh, many years, and we want to sustain the same uh, that same same way. So, so let me put this differently. You know, what is the you know typical uh, you know AUM or disbursement target for a branch manager? So if you see. Uh, we don't give a target on a AUM business for the branch because it's a continuous business. And there is, uh, if you reach a certain level, then you realize that this AUM uh, has been achieved maybe before time also in many cases. So what we give a target is on basis of what is the branch sustainability in number of files what they can process. So any branch, if that reaches to 16 to 17 disbursement in a, uh, in a, in a month, there we feel that this branch has reached the pinnacle basically. On an average, if we see the number of branches, uh, you know, what we have today, uh, the average unit what they are disbursing is in tune of uh, 11 to 12 units in a month. So any new branch will start, it starts with a, uh, you know, humble number of 6, 7 units. Eventually it starts moving and reach to the level which is mid-range level of around 12, 13, 11, 12, 13 uh, units. And eventually when it reaches to the pinnacle, it goes to the level of 17, 18 units. Once it reaches to 17, 18 units, then it's the time to focus on that branch and maybe fragment into two, two pieces uh, so that, you know, the numbers can be accordingly set with the uh, next level of division. Ultimately, all the process, all the file, uh, you know, uh, output has not to be depend upon sales team, but also the processing team, basically. So without uh, having a undue pressure on that set of the team, and getting the right output, we believe 17, 18 units is the maximum which we try to produce from one branch. So any market geography which gives the right output in that direction, then we try to further penetrate it by uh, adding one more branch in that near vicinity. So this way, you know, these are the three important levels. The first level, the starting level, the second level, the mid level, with 12, 13 units, and the next level, which is the wish list, and uh, which, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, all the branches take up immediately, but, uh, you know, uh, substantially with time it grows, is a 17, 18 years for branch, basically. That we try to achieve. And how long is the journey from 5, 6 units to 17, 18 units? Is it like 4 years or? So, it, uh, again, it depends upon geography, uh, market response, our resources. But what we have seen averagely, uh, uh, the uh, branch becomes sustainable uh, to the level of, uh, you know, 11, 12 units uh, in the year of around one and a half years approximately. And another one, one and a half years of journey reaches to this level of 16, 17 uh, units particularly. Got it. Uh, you know, if I look at the repayment rates, uh, there was an expectation at the beginning of the year that uh, because of withdrawal of CNSS, uh, you know, the repayment rate would go down. And I guess that's visible in some of your peers. So, you know, for us, it, it's almost been stable. So uh, is it something that the BT out rate has gone up this year? Or is it is it something that repayments have been higher this year? Uh, in fact, you know, uh, our, uh, our repayment rate has improved by about uh, 3%. Uh, as compared to the previous year, uh, you know, uh, earlier it was, you know, higher in the range of around, if you look at this as a percentage of opening AUM, this was at around 22% in FY23, and at this point it is around 19%. So there is 3% improvement, and 2% is driven by the uh, by the withdrawal of the CLSs, and 1% is on account of our reduction in the BT rate uh, in this particular year. So BT 
BT rate last year was at around 6.5%. This year it has around 5.5%. Nishin, this answer question? Yeah, I think this answers my uh, my question. Uh, thank you very much and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask question. The next question is from the line of Raghav Garg from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, Mr. Raghav, you can go with the question. Yeah, hey, sorry, I was in mute. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, when I don't know if this question has been asked before or not, but uh, if I look at your NHP funding, that's about 15%. Uh, do you plan to take this up? Because generally, when we look at other affordable housing finance companies, they tend to operate somewhere around 20-25%. Uh, so to that extent, uh, would you say that you have uh, room to increase this share? And uh, how would you... Uh, look at uh, ramping up your uh, NHB funding over a period of time. Uh, that's my only question. Thank you. So at this point of time, we were having around 15% as you have rightly said. And on top of that, we have around 210 crore of undrawn sanctions, which we will draw in Q1 of uh, this current financial year, which will improve the NHB, uh, uh, NHB funding uh, uh, ratio. And further, you know, uh, just to you know, uh, emphasize here that NHB funding ratio is also a function of your credit rating as well as your scale. Uh, so, you know, as we have got a rating upgrade as well, so we expect in the coming time we should be able to improve the uh, NHP, uh, NHP funding ratio further to around, you know, 18-20%. So, so I think you had guided for a 15 to 20 basis points reduction uh, next year in cost of funds. Does that assume that you would increase your NHP funding to 18-20%? Uh, yeah, so you know, yes. Uh, so it is so so it is a blend of both. You know, uh, the like uh, uh, reduction that we get on our new funding as well as uh, increase in the proportion of NHB funding. Okay, so that cumulative benefit uh, would be around 18 to uh, 15 to 20 basis points. Uh, right. And at what rate would you would you be drawing uh, your NHB fund? Uh, that's one question. And another one is, uh, what is the share of affordable? Uh, 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 fund uh, within this total NHB uh, pool that you have? So out of the total NHB pool, we have, you know, uh, affordable housing fund to the tune of 50% earlier, but now we are seeing, you know, uh, some reduction in the, uh, uh, from the, you know, uh, from the government side or from the NHB side in, in this affordable housing pool. Uh, so like, you know, uh, earlier this used to be around 50-60%, this has come down to around, you know, 30%, uh, 25% this particular year. Uh, so earlier, you know, the spread between the regular borrowing cost and the NHB fund was around 200 basis point. Now this is, uh, this spread has uh, slightly reduced to around 150 basis point. So you're essentially saying that uh, the, the allocation uh, uh, from the government has reduced uh, towards the affordable housing fund. Is that what you're saying? So it is, uh, you know, uh, again, cannot be uh, assumed that this has been reduced from the government side. It is something that they have to plan and, uh, you know, uh, impute. Sometimes it goes to the level of 50% and accordingly sometimes it also comes down, basically. So there is uh, not a, uh, you know, some kind of precedence that we can think of that is start receiving or things in that direction. Um, there is uh, expectation of schemes after, you know, this uh, election get over. So what that comes, uh, I think it is still under discussion. So uh, it can go, you know, uh, either way in that sense. So assumption will be difficult to create out of this uh, answer what Ashish has given. This is a part of, you know, annual budgetary exercise of the government. So, you know, uh, so we'll see, you know, how the like budget for this year goes uh, uh, once this election will be over. Understood. Uh, thanks a lot. That's all from Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sartak Malhotra from Think Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, I just want to check, uh, is there like any plan around like the, you know, the, the mix of LAP and affordable housing or, uh, or yeah, the home loans? Because LAP seems to be a little bit on the high side. So our home loan LAP ratio is broadly stable at around, you know, 58-42%. Uh, 58% 58 is housing loan and 42% is LAP. 
and uh, just to you know uh, reiterate from the uh, principal business criteria perspective we keep to selling you know our lab portfolio to banks in the form of direct assignment transactions which help us maintaining you know uh, our on balance sheet hl lab ratio in a much better fashion so at a balance sheet level our home loan ratio is more than 70% and lab is close to 30% got it and any like can you give me some update on like how the co lending piece is progressing uh so co lending is something which we have started last year uh, in the month of march 2023 Uh, over the year, you know, last 12 months, it has seen you know uh, some good shape. We have been able to disburse around 150 odd crore of uh, funding uh, in co-lending, and uh, you know uh, this number may improve in the like coming time. But this is a evolving subject still. Uh, we are still working on you know like couple of things, and uh, we'll see some uh, you know uh, uptake in this co-lending volume in the like coming years. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Congrats on strong set of numbers. The my question was on uh, in-house sourcing. So 98% of the sourcing is in-house for us, and maybe say to reach a certain size of AUM, we can continue this uh, 35% uh, AUM CAGR. But uh, some of our peers uh, say. Uh, not having the alternate sourcing channel has have faced difficulties in terms of growth uh, after reaching a certain size. So, are there any thoughts that maybe not out and out uh, uh, underwriting from say corporate like DSS, but uh, individual DSS or connectors uh, which some of our peers use? Uh, is there any thought process to tap that sometime in future, or how how? You think uh, on on those lines uh, to keep up the uh, growth, say uh, even after we reach a certain size or certain threshold. Yeah, thanks, Sanket. Actually, the uh, point is uh, the joy of this business is more into evolving in a fashion, which uh, brings uh, some innovation around that side. So instead of uh, doing what market is doing, uh, India should always be to be a little focused on the tech side. And I think on the field we always have to do this thing uh, to you know get the best output output by ensuring ease of doing business at the field side basically. So when we put our resources, give them a right technology, right equipment to operate in market, they become more confident, and that ease of doing business helps them to you know uh, score better better in the market sense. I think our more objectives are more on improving the productivity at that level instead of focusing on the you know third party channels and all. That channels are anyway always available. They were available in past and future also, right? And uh, you know it's a uh, more on a uh, trade off basically what you want to focus on. We believe that this is something which you want to create a nation on uh, for coming times also. Uh, Giving that choice is always available, so you know that's not something uh, we have a focus as of now. So if it has to be come up, I think uh, that is not in the uh, sort of plan immediately as of now. Sure, sir. And uh, lastly, on uh, this uh, stage two plus stage three, which currently 30 plus DPD is around 3.2 per hour. You think it's a steady state number? Or where where should uh, we put our hooks on in in terms of uh, seeing seeing this number on a sustainable basis? So you know, uh, so at this point of time, we have around 2.4 percent, which is in line with our last year. But if you see the you know journey of last year, that will give you like enough indications that you know our DPD 30 remains in the range of 2.5 percent to 3.5 percent, largely uh, during the year. So there are some seasonality factors, but when you see year on year, we know that this is very well in control and things around that side. That we are putting again and again. So if there are any seasonality factor or whatever, it is not a, our collection teams are very well integrated. Uh, all 400 collection resources are available across these two twenty branches, and uh, we have a good control on that. Side. Okay, sure, sir. Yeah, those were my questions. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Dave from Nepon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Sir, uh, just one question. Uh, and uh, you alluded to your BT rate or BT outs coming down from 6.5% to 5.5%, if I got the number right. I uh, just wanted to understand uh, this trend, right? And if you could just elaborate a little more on what is leading to this improvement. Is it we are offering lower rates to these customers and getting them on board uh, or not letting them go? And what is the process that you are following to keep this uh, pool, uh, like indicating this pool that uh, we uh, understand that they want to go for a BT out and we are trying to uh, curb them? So interest rates, top-ups, what are the like two, three top reasons that we are able to help the customer with or services uh, in, in some form that helps the customer to stay back versus uh, beating out. So we can just what what led to this improvement and how can we do this consistently over the next couple of years? So uh, BP rate normally, you know, uh, uh, depends how the market rate trends are there basically. Uh, so last couple of quarters, uh, there has been always a trend which on upper side. So people don't like to go out with just, uh, you know, getting a top up or something like they also look for a interest rate in, uh, cut in one year or other way. So if interest cycles are going up, then automatically BT rate also comes down. That is an important piece. Uh, on the other side, if, you know, uh, you are going deeper markets, which are tier 3, tier 4, there you will obviously find that BT rates are lower than the larger markets basically. So as we are penetrating the current set of markets where we are operating it, so the BT low rate will have a, this a trend where, you know, uh, they will not go substantially as it goes in the larger market on that side. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, these are set of customers, and normally they go for BT after a certain time uh, where, you know, they feel that it's a time to take a top up or maybe a very large rate deep cut, which is not a trend as of now. Basically. Sure. Uh, and if you could just highlight uh, where these customers go to, in the sense, are these smaller NBFCs or HFCs, they try to be aggressive and take our customers, or is it like more banks, SFB, where are these customers beating out if you have a trend of these 5% or customers that go, go out? So uh, this includes uh, public sector banks, uh, which are spread across country. People, once they have a good track record, they start filing ITRs regularly, and they reach to a level when they realize it, that they can have decent rate cut. They approach to the uh, public sector banks also. And in few of the NDSC who are quite aggressive on the NTV side, they look forward that if they are getting a very, uh, you know, uh, 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 large chunk of pop up on that side, they also go there basically. So we see uh, for us uh, the uh, top five, six institution who do the BT for us, that includes PSBs and a few of the large NBCs on that side. Mr. Ryan, last question on this is, uh, at what vintage does uh, a PSU bank or a NBA, aggressive NBSU come to? Is it like two, three years of track record with us and then they come and come in? Or is it like yes. one year and they yes. jump into their customer? Normally, two, three years of track record, they uh, look forward around that side. So that happens in this category particularly. And again, I'm saying that most of these balance transfers which happens are in the tier two or the bigger towns compared to in the smaller places, basically. So what we are seeing internal trends also, in the markets where we are deep inside, we don't have any of these trends coming around. But yes, today, these national bank and large NBSC, they have a presence in, uh, you know, tier one, tier two uh, in a, a very sustainable way. So they always opt for these kind of opportunities, which is easy to gather. But yes, uh, before that, these guys have to create a track record of two, three years and, uh, you know, regularly filing the ITRs and things are on that side. Perfect. This is very helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Stripple Joshi from Equiterius. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good morning and thank you for giving me the opportunity. So my question was uh, pertaining to the vintage of our branches. So in, in, in one of the slides you've shown, you know, how the how the AUM of, uh, of, of AUM per branch of our branches have been improving since FI21. Uh, so just wanted to understand for more than three year branches, where do you see, uh, you know, the that, that number sort of stabilizing? Uh, and, and, and how do you see this, uh, this one to three year uh, uh, vintage branches seeing the improvement on the UM per branch. So just wanted to understand that metric and, and what is the scalability there. So, uh, 
So, you know, something which you don't feel that it has to stabilize at one point. It is a continuous journey which has to keep improving as the vintage and, you know, uh, time progresses. Uh, for us, the stabilization which comes is the number of units each branch is dispersing. So, take an example of any branch. If sustainability, it is dispersing 18 units in a month, which means approximately 200 units in a, in a year. And if it is existing from last 7, 8, 9 years, the EM can go to any whatever level it is basically. So it's not that it has to be sustained to say 25 crores or 30 crores. We have a branches which are with us from almost, you know, 10, 12 years uh, and they are fully sustainable and giving a output of around 18, 90 minutes month on month and their EM is anyway cost 60, 70 crores also. So it depends upon what level you have to take it to the branch in terms of the output and productivity. And for us that metric is this 17, 18 units monthly disbursement. So there will be a few advantages to uh, uh, advantage with branch. First of all, this customer is sticky. So they don't have a tendency to close more in one year or two years of time. Uh, the expected uh, life of customer in the system is around six and a half, seven years. So for six, seven years, there's a consistent growth in that size. And eventually, as we've seen that the branches which opened in 2013, when the ticket size was hardly three and a half lakhs, has gone to nine and a half lakh rupees, that inflation factor also works around that piece. So instead of focusing on EUM, it is something like how the branch is sustainable and how monthly output they can give it. That's a metric that we measure and that's a metric that is a realistic picture of on the ground how it has to work basically. Got it. So typically how much uh, radius does one branch uh, cover and and at what, like, so So, do we have a, a strategy that if, if a branch is of certain size uh, or, or of certain uh, customer base, we split it? Uh, given that, you know, uh, uh, I mean, the, the business in that particular geography is pretty strong or, or the opportunity that like in that geography is pretty strong? So, a uh, point is, uh, normally when we open uh, any new branch, we see that uh, from the existing branch to start with, it should be around 50-60 kilometers away, basically, from the existing branch. So that, uh, you know, both of the branches can cater a certain fragmented geography near to them. But as the time progress, if there is a lot of potential in that market, then we don't mind even opening one branch in between these two branches, maybe 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers away from there. So in few states where the penetration is quite deep, and, you know, there are cases where two branches are, uh, you know, just uh, in a range of 40, 35, 40 kilometers also. But normally, whenever we try to open a new branch, we try to maintain a distance of 60, 70 kilometers from the existing one. Got it, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for answering all my questions and good luck for the next quarter. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhigar Jani from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for taking my uh, This would check this uh, self-employed to self-employed that has been moving over the last four years more towards self-employed. Uh, do you think this is where this is the ratio where it will settle overall uh, in terms of the mix, or do you see it more moving more towards the self-employed side more? Uh, I have two more questions. I'll uh, ask them after this. We are to affordable housing, and we cater the segment uh, which is a part of LIG largely lower income group, and the markets what we operate uh, tier two, tier three, and tier four. Uh, so we have, uh, with time, uh, built an expertise around underwriting them internally for the self-employed. And that is the reason that's a focus area for us. Uh, the kind of yields, what we maintain, the kind of, you know, profile, what we take up on the book, I think those expertise need to be built and we have to hone those skills, which our underwriting is able to do in last 12, 13 years. So as the time progressing, uh, the ratio of self-employed is improving. As we should see today, it's around 72-73% of the self-employment book. So, yield stability is going to go up only because that's a major, uh, you know, focus area also for, for us. Uh, so, uh, even in these markets, the salaried people you'll find majorly the cash salaried business or salaried people who don't have a very secure job in that sense. But as you see the self-employed people, they have a good sustainability, they have evolved themselves to a certain level that now they can, uh, you know, put the equity to get their new home. And there they need the support from India Shelter, there we get a stand along with them, basically. So with this thought and psychology and this philosophy, 
our focus is going to continue to remain more on the self employed side so four years back self employed ratio was around 65% uh, in four years it has come to the level of 72% if you see next three four years in you you look it will go up to the maybe level of 70 78% understood sir and sir uh, just uh, to understand uh, in your uh, presentation you have mentioned uh, 30 plus dpd as 2.4% uh, but if you add the stage 2 plus stage 3 numbers that comes out to be 3.2% so uh, can you explain what is the discrepancy or i'm not able to understand something here uh, so there is no discrepancy as such uh, like jagat so uh, there are two functions one is that you know uh, there is a restructured portfolio that we have done during the covid restructuring time so whatever uh, you know accounts that we have restructured uh, at that part of time that pool was around 30 cr in fact over the last two years this has come down to around 20 cr so out of this 20 cr uh, 2 crore is npa which is there in stage 3 and 18 crore is there into stage 2 uh, we have classified uh, them at stage 2 asset irrespective of their dpd so even though these accounts are paying their regular emis and all that but considering high risk in this particular uh, class of uh, customers we have classified them as stage 2 for the ecl perspective so the restructured book is in stage 2 which is why it is higher yeah and they have a decent track of uh, more than 18 months where they are paying regularly right sir and uh, on the co lending side Uh, given that we are now started it last year and we are building it up what impact do you see do you see any impact on yields because i am presuming this would be at lower yields than what you would normally do because with banks we will be doing higher ticket sizes per se or is it at similar yields uh, as compared to your normal book uh, so even if we do you know slightly lower uh, yield to the customer and customers Uh, even in that, you know, in our share of uh, uh, like pool lending, we will get higher proportion of yield uh, because you know our agreement with the uh, with the pool lending partner will remain in the range of you know nine percent under and uh, uh, even if the ultimate customer is getting slightly lower than what we are currently offering, we will make higher yield on twenty percent. So that will not impact our yield downward side. Okay, understood, understood. And sir, uh, lastly. Uh, could you share the one plus number if you share uh our one plus remain in the range of 4 to 5% at uh, in the in the march 2000 uh, 24 it was at around 4.2% 4.2 yeah yeah okay thank you that were all my questions thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of shubhanshu mishra from philip capital please go ahead Hi, good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. I just wanted to understand a bit split of uh, the uh, LAP and home loans into salaried and self-employed. And again, if this can be given in uh, tier wise, because uh, the, uh, uh, the slide gives the complete mix. So, how do we look at home loans and LAP with each of these individual things? Uh, 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 And second is that uh, sorry, sorry, she's not able to intervene. Can you, uh, uh, you know, your voice is echoing. If you can just, uh, you know, one second. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is this better? Yes, it's okay. Sure. So, uh, so if this split of slab and home loans can be given in terms of salaried and self-employed and the uh, tier of cities. That's the first question. The second is that uh, though we speak about own sourcing, if we look at our cost to income or OPEX to assets is too high at around uh, cost to income is at around 45 percent, OPEX to assets at around 4.5 percent. So what's going inside that OPEX that makes it so uh, high uh, if we are sourcing on our own? Uh, the uh, third question is that uh, what are the various risk management tools that we are do, uh, taking at the onboarding for lap? Because if we are doing lower city laps, the liquidity of that property remains low. And uh, given the fact that uh, the ticket size is low, we can't invoke in this uh, surface. So, uh, is there a mix of in, uh, income levels, industries? Uh, if we can speak about that in lap, right? these are my three questions. So, Shubhanshu, we are a housing finance company. 
and housing finance company have a surcharge right from 1 lakh uh, rupee onwards basically right so yes uh, other financial services which include and these and all that starts from 20 lakh rupees but particularly housing finance uh, company have this uh, advantage of having surcharge to at uh, 1 lakh rupee basically now coming to the next question our loan against property ticket size remains around 9 to 10 lakh rupees Here we look for a properties which are purely a self-occupied residential property. So on our book, there are more than 99% SORPs, what we call self-occupied residential property. And there again, the LTV which stand is in tune of 45-46%, which is uh, you know, lower than 50% even, right? Uh, most of these, uh, uh, you know, customer for us, they are self-employed. In fact, for loan against property. the customer which are uh, with us is more than 90% 95% which are self employed selling are normally which we are coming on book is uh, for the home loan required it's not for the lap requirements and there uh, when you see the ticket size of 9 10 lakh like rupees ltv of 45% and the property of sorp the most of them the end use is you know whatever the small requirements they have and here they can have requirements not only for business sometimes they require the money uh since, since they have a sustainable business also for consumption on also sometime in marriage or sometime uh, you know for selling kids around but that portion is also very very low so most of them if you find this is into the business expansion over on that side with the self occupied with 45% and these are the important risk parameters and we do have a uh, you know uh, assessment where every customer is being met at his premises of operation where he is running a business as well as his Uh, you know, property which is popping around that side. Any customers which we disperse before that, there are at least four touch points at his premises, and then on basis of our evaluation, where we try to capture at least seventy to eighty points, which gives an information about the customer uh, before the evaluation. Then on basis of the BRE rules, what that gives the output, the customer tension is given. So this uh, is a blend of uh, touch with customers as well as using the technology. Uh, some uses of data science and scorecard, and giving the credit norms which help us talk into that piece. And that's the reason, if you have seen the trends of the delinquency of India shelter from last eight ten years, they are sustainable. Though we are in the same business from last twelve to twelve years. And you know, and your your question of uh, opex to EM is higher. So there are you know two functions. One is obviously scale. Uh, so as we you know, uh, grow in terms of our scale, uh, you see that you know our opex is coming down. Secondly, uh, since we are in the business of direct direct origination, our cost is in the form of salaries that we uh, uh, you know give to our loan officers, our, uh, our branch people, and all that. So whatever you know salaries we give, those salaries come into the uh, come into our PNL. While in case of you know prime housing, you know uh, whatever origination they do uh, through DSAs and all that. All those costs get amortized over the tenure of the loan. So uh, you know uh, this is a challenge in affordable housing, where you know income, uh, upfront income that you get, that get amortized, and your expenses come into your PNL. Uh, but you know, so that's a uh, business answer. Uh, so uh, over the years, as we scale, our opex will come down. Understood. And if I can just squeeze in one last question to our guidance of 35% growth, that's on AUM. So uh, ballpark. Six to seven percent should be inflationary uh, growth in terms of ticket size. The, uh, there should be some amount of growth with uh, some degree of our branches maturing and uh, breaking even. So that should occupy almost like you know ten, twelve percent of the growth. So balances on the actual organic growth is somewhere closer to twenty percent. Is that a fair understanding? Well, if you see our ticket size has not grown for last few years, in fact, that remains in the region of ten percent lakh or something that. So that inflation is not overnight, which happens six, seven percent year on year. That that is not really into business. Of we are uh, catering the set of customer who are purely affordable, and they require a you know loan to uh, create, uh, make sure that they have a home or create a mortgage around that side. So we don't look growth keeping in mind these aspects of just in, increasing our ticket size. We see in you know uh, ensuring that we have more number of customer on book, and that is the reason whenever the question is being asked on the EM side. And our answer and representation is more on that how the productivity can be improved in branch and how we ensure that the branches go to the level of 17, 18 units on month basis. So uh, what we indicate is something 
which has to be, uh, you know, uh, given surety that this is a number that uh, we are intact on. And if we need this number, go beyond that, around that piece, I think it's a matter of execution, which, you know, uh, as we progress, we'll keep uh, giving the output on that side. Sure, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Omkar Kamtekar from Bonanza. Please go ahead. Hello. I'm audible. Yes. Hello, I'm audible. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, the first question was with respect to how the branch addition will happen. So, we, or we, as we uh, just uh, told in the presentation, we have uh, 15 branch, uh, 15, uh, 15, uh, 15 states that we have presented. So, are we going to go deeper in these specific states, uh, whether vintage is higher or say three years or more, or are we going to expand into more states? Uh, and which specific region are we looking at? Are we looking to expand northwards towards maybe UP further and increase our percentage of AUM there, or we go southward where the maybe the income uh, income profile of the applicants is much better? Uh, so, Keshwadi, uh, we have to open uh, these 40 to 43 branches across country. And only in these 15 states, under penetration, we where we feel that demand is, uh, you know, picking up quite well. Instantly, we can gratify that thing basically. So this branch will be, uh, you know, expanded um, across, starting from South Rajasthan, MP, and some part of North also. So if you see between 15 states, uh, if you see uh, average of each state will not be more than three or four. That is the number of branches you can open. But yes, in few states, we'll be opening maybe up to the four. And in few states, we will sit to the two or three level, basically. So, uh, if you talk about particularly the ratio between them, then this year, I think, a number of branches which will be opening in South will be a little more, uh, you know, compared to the uh, rest states, if you uh, go the state by state particularly. But otherwise, we are opening across countries these 42, 43 branches. Understood, understood. And the uh, and with respect to the uh, AUM breakup, 50% of the AUM is coming from tier 3 cities. Uh, so it, um, it looks like we are making a conscious effort to go deeper into the more rural and uh, you know uh, uh, inner parts of the country. So is this uh, is it fair to assume that as we go deeper, this uh, this will go further higher? And as a consequence, maybe the yields might also jump up because uh, again because the riskier profile of the uh, applicants there, uh, the yields might also go up. Uh, the point is, uh, for us, TRC is not a rural. These are the towns, places, and most of them are district headquarters also where the population is more than 2 lakh, basically. So for me, Kishangar is a TRC. Uh, for me, uh, you know, uh, Alwar is a TRC. So these are not a rural market. The economy is booming up. And, uh, you know, numbers are intact. Property rates are quite decent. And you you get a customer uh, where, you know, they are looking for the... Uh, getting a house of in range of 18, 20 lakh rupees and looking for the loan of 10 to 11 lakh rupees. So this is not a rural segment particularly and they're quite conscious about, you know, what is the loan and what are things are on that side. So uh, our thought is to maintain the spread of 6% six, uh, 6 and maintain the quality around that side instead of, you know, pushing for high yields and, you know, uh, taking the risk which, which we feel that, uh, you know, we don't want to build appetite around that side basically. So the penetration is going because this is the markets which are getting developed more than the rest of the country. So if you see the growth trajectory which is coming in tier 1 market, uh, I think you'll find uh, the growth in tier 2, tier 3 or beyond is much better and much progressive. Understood. And finally, with respect to the uh, buckets, uh, which specific buckets? So uh, we have our peers, uh, some who are specifically concentrated on the uh, sub-10 lakh, uh, some, are some are specifically targeting the 15 to 20 lakh bucket of uh, uh, applicants in the affordable housing segment. What is our uh, our target uh, ta target range? Of, uh, of uh, you know applicants that we are uh, trying to see because I can see uh, the share of uh, the five to ten lakhs is uh, is increasing very steadily and uh, even fifteen to fifteen up to fifteen lakhs is also increasing. So is there when yeah. we see the largest uh, amount of growth both on EM side and on volume side? So our maximum uh, focus remains between five to twenty five lakhs and out of that you are absolutely right that 5 to 15 had a more concentration because our ticket size stands around 10 lakh rupees. So this is a segment, uh, you know, which we get a, which, uh, you know, it comes and fit into our bill very uh, in right fashion. And we want to continue around that side. 
with time, uh, if inflation goes up and these categories inches up towards from 10 to 11 or 12, that is a progressive journey around that side. But what is current state of affairs? 10 lakh is a you know average ticket size that we keep running around. Understood, understood. And just on the coal inside, side, a small clarification. How how much of the uh, total AUM do you see and with that, say over three, four, five years, uh, the coal ending business to uh, contribute to the uh, total AUM? Do we have something in our minds with respect to that? Uh, I think we just uh, start, you know, uh, building this book. It's too early that uh, you have to depend upon as a part of your, uh, uh, you know, entire AUM per set is in that sense. We have to test, we are with certain banks which we have tie up and we are just trying to understand how the synergies are getting built. So, uh, uh, this is too early to give an uh, you know, uh, output in terms of that this is the kind of percentage we want to maintain. But if this uh, business uh, is picking up and giving the right output for us, then definitely uh, we will not shy away from it. Understood, understood. And finally, just on the energy spread, uh, if, uh, what is the spread that we uh, that we get? Because some of our competitors, from what I have seen, get up, uh, what they get funding from NHV is approximately five to five point five percent for their funds, uh, and they get approximately five to five point five percent spread. Uh, that is reset plus thirty bits. So, what is the spread that we occupy uh, that we occupy on the NHV funding? So, you know, NHV has, you know, two schemes. One is the regular, uh, like, regular refinance scheme. Another is affordable housing finance scheme. So, on regular fun, uh, refinance scheme, you can see that fund is coming at around 8%, uh, wherein, you know, you lend and you make margin of around uh, 550 to 600 basis point. Then there is affordable housing finance scheme, wherein funding comes at around 5.5%. Uh, 5 .5%, and But there is a cap on all lending. Uh, wherein, you know, uh, you generally uh, end up lending at around 10 and a half, 11 percent. So at the end of the day, you make similar spread on, uh, on like both the schemes. So technically, it doesn't matter that whether you are drawing in uh, affordable housing fund, regular housing fund, once your PNL remains uh, broadly similar. Understood. So 500 to 500 to 600 basis point would be the range overall. So it, it would, it's not a material difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, understood, understood. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequence Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is uh, related to uh, what is the uh, total co-lending that is as percentage of AUM as of now and what is the uh, percentage of the AUM, we, are, we have an internal estimate maybe three years down the line that we are looking on uh, for the co-lending part. Uh, so, you know, as we have said, you know, uh, so at this point of time, co-lending is at evolving stage. Uh, so, at this point of time, AUM is, uh, you know, closer to around 2% uh, in this co-lending. And, uh, you know, as we progress, we have a better experience with our partners, uh, their policies and all that. We can give a guidance at a later date on this. Okay, so but can you tell me what oh, which are the banking tie-ups or other tie-ups that we have for co-lending as of now? Uh, so we have two tie-ups, uh, uh, wherein you know one is private bank and another is PSU bank uh, that we are doing at this point of time, and okay. that is primarily for uh, loan against property. Uh, home loan is something which we are doing uh, on our own book entirely. Okay, sorry, uh, I missed the part. Sorry, it is for which property? Uh, so, loan against property is something which we are doing in co-lending. Uh, okay, okay. Like as a product and home loan is uh, something which we do entirely on our own balance sheet. Okay, uh, got it, got it. And uh, on the ROA part of it, what is the steady state ROA that we could achieve, like say, three years down the line? I mean, two, three years down the line. Uh, so, at this point of time, you will see, you know, ROA, uh, ROA is the fund of 5%, uh, but, you know, at this point of time, uh, we have recently raised our equity, so benefit of equity is coming. Uh, coming. So as we you know, reach to a leverage of three and a half, uh, per, uh, three and a half times. Broadly, we uh, we expect that ROA will stabilize to around four uh, percent. Okay. And that is a steady state, uh, I believe. Uh, okay. So debt debt to equity as of now. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we are, after raising the fund, the debt to equity is quite uh, at a very good level and we've got uh, quite a headroom. What is the amount of debt to equity that uh, 
I mean, we uh, we are comfortable uh, reaching up to say four and a half, five times uh, of the book. Uh, so you know, uh, at this point of time, we are at around two point five times of our debt to equity. And uh, given the discussion with the bankers, rating agency, we believe uh, uh, five times is also quite achievable. But that's a long journey. I mean, the V1 for reaching three and a half times will take around you know eighteen to twenty four months from here. So it's a journey, you know, uh, that will keep evolving. Right, right, sir. Uh, okay, sir. That, that's all uh, from my side, and all the best for you. Thank you. As that was the last question for the day, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rupendra Singh for closing. Yeah, thank you, everyone, uh, for taking your valuable time for attending our earning call. Uh, we will keep you posted for uh, any other further updates. Also, uh, audio recording and transcript of this call will be uploaded on our website uh, shortly. Uh, looking forward to hosting you all in next quarter. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have any further questions or require additional information, please feel free to reach us out. Thank you so much. Thanks once again. Thank you. On behalf of ICIC Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line. Thank you.